Charlotte Dunker is with us now. Charlotte, how are you getting on? Thank you. How are you? There was a certain inevitability, I think, about this after the second part, particularly of the Piers Morgan two-piece interview went out uh, last Thursday night, where Cristiano Ronaldo said he had felt betrayed and pushed out by the club, that they were trying to get rid of him during the summer transfer window. And then particularly when he said he had no respect for Eric Ten Hag or that it's no way he could have respect for him even in the future. It seemed inevitable that the club would have to take steps after that to rip up his contract. Yeah, I think when those quotes first started coming out from the interview on Sunday, it was apparent that there was no way back to Cristiano Ronaldo. There's a reason why he wanted to do this interview. He wanted to get his point across, and I think he got his point across very clearly. So for the two parties to be able to come to an agreement in a semi-quick manner, really, it's probably going to serve them both in the best way possible. Yeah, it has happened pretty quickly. So appropriate steps was Manchester United's line on Friday lunchtime. And now here we are on Tuesday evening, he has left. And in a way, probably a good thing for both parties in that Cristiano Ronaldo can now concentrate, albeit as an unattached player on the World Cup with Portugal, his last World Cup. And Manchester United can now move on. And this circus won't continue between now and the resumption of the Premier League next month. Yeah, I think if you look at the way that Eric Ten Hag has managed Cristiano Ronaldo since he came into the club, he's very adamant that Cristiano will not be this circus that detracts from what it is that he is trying to do. Ronaldo himself was put in front of media yesterday in Qatar, although I understand that it was a bit of a quiet one where he was ushered in where not many people are expecting him to be there. So he wants all the focus to be on Portugal, but if he really wanted the focus to be on Portugal, he wouldn't have let this video... Uh, interview with Piers Morgan, sorry, be released so close to the beginning of the World Cup. So a lot of it is obviously about him. He's the only reason why he's got to where he is in his career and being such a serial winner is by focusing on himself and by having such a big ego. I'm not saying that as a negative thing. I think to be able to win that many Ballon d'Ors, to be able to win that many titles is is because he's, he's so great and he is so selfish and so confident in what he can do himself. But um, yeah, I think this is definitely the best way for both parties. Yeah, I mean, look, his drive has been crucial to his career, as you mentioned, all the way along. He uh, made himself into the best player in the world, which is recognised with those five Ballon d'Or. He's won the Champions League on five different occasions. He's been successful in three massive leagues along the way. In some ways, he's been battling against the fading of the light and the fact that his own career is coming towards an end at 37 years of age. Um, but I always got the feeling from Eric Ten Hag with the way that he's handled this, particularly since the summer, he was very quick to defend Ronaldo even after the incident against Royal Vallecano where he walked out early he even held his counsel a little bit after the Tottenham Hotspur game in many ways Eric Ten Hag I think has probably come out of this stronger um, by showing that he was respecting a club legend and at the same time he's been able to not be forced into playing him Yeah I genuinely don't think that Ten Hag could have come out of this situation any better like you say, he's never spoken against Ronaldo. I think he's disciplined him in a way that many Manchester United fans, if you were to ask them, would agree with the way he was dealt with. Obviously, Cristiano Ronaldo was suspended after he refused to come on as a substitute in the Tottenham game. He wasn't available to play the game against Chelsea. I think all Manchester United fans probably would agree with that because you can't just say you're not coming on for the club that you play for. So I think He's shown that he has that authority. And I think maybe since Sir Alex Ferguson left the club, they've not really had that uh, that manager in charge who's been able to show their authority and to be able to stamp their mark on the club in the way that maybe he has in the last few months. So it's definitely been a positive for him and how he's dealt with it. Ronaldo says he's going to always have love for Manchester United's fans in his heart, even with this departure. But will this affect his legacy with Manchester United supporters? Because they're obviously tremendously disappointed when he left in 2009 after putting in three massive seasons which led to winning the Champions League in 08 and getting to the final in 2009 he was named the Ballon d'Or in that year in 08 as well he was absolutely tremendous for them over the two spells now he scored 145 goals but to me at least it seems that this is going to be a bit of a sour breakup this second time around uh, he's not leaving maybe with as much love as he would have the first time about potentially is this damaging to his legacy at Old Trafford because so many Manchester United supporters were disappointed when he left back in 2009 but possibly this is a much more sour breakup by comparison to his move to Real Madrid I think it is and I think in the short term everyone would agree that this is the best possible thing that could have happened for both Manchester United and Cristiano Ronaldo for them to part ways in the way that they have I think the things that he said about the club I think a lot of the fans agree with that he spoke 
very negatively about the Glazer family. I know a lot of the Manchester United fans agree with what he said, but obviously it's the timing of what he said and, and the things that he said about Eric Ten Hag as well and about being betrayed. I think everyone sided with the manager in this instance, but I do feel that if he was to come back to Old Trafford in two to three years' time, I feel like he would be given a good reception by the fans because of what he's done in the past. I think Gary Neville made a very good point on the very point that you've made about the fact that he spoke out about the Glazers and the inaction to improve things at the club. And, you know, he said last Wednesday that some of the facilities were the same as when he arrived as a 21 year old at the club and they hadn't been improved in the nearly 20 years since. I think if he'd made those comments from, say, a position of power last year where he was the club's player of the year and the top scorer last season and he criticised the owners at that point fans would have probably seen it l- less so than this felt like the interview last week was about Cristiano as opposed to holding the club to account. Of course it was about Cristiano. The reason why he wanted to do it was about himself. It was about his future career prospects. Every every single thing about that interview was carefully thought out to the point where it got put out and a couple of hours after Manchester United had played their last game before the World Cup break. So there was going to be no Eric Ten Hag press conference to reply to it, anything like that. So... Everything he's done has been thought out, but some of the points that he has brought up, I think many fans and even people at the club, they've agreed with it. They've agreed that when he arrived back, maybe the facilities hadn't developed as much as everyone thought they possibly would have, but their argument to that was they've put a lot of money in there. I know like they've pumped hundreds of thousands of pounds into improving the training facilities to get them up to a standard where Eric Ten Hag wants them to be at. So that would be their retort to that is that since he's come back, they have agreed with what he said and they have made improvements. So it's a shame that it took him to come back maybe for them to start to realise that, but there have been improvements that have been made. Something that Cristiano didn't seem to realise himself when he was speaking last week was he criticised the club for making commercial decisions over footballing decisions. I couldn't help but think that his return to Old Trafford a couple of seasons ago, even if it was to stop Manchester City from signing him, was maybe part of the motivation around it. It was still a cold commercial decision to bring back Cristiano Ronaldo to the club. I don't think he quite grasped that he was actually part of the very system he was <laughs> criticising. Yeah, I, I 100% ag- agree. The, the irony was stark there and I tried to make that comment on Twitter and got hammered down by Cristiano Ronaldo fans thinking I was slating him, but it was more the ownership. You've seen with a lot of the signings they've made in the past, it's been about the brand, it's been about the player, it's been about the selling of shirts. And obviously there was that whole added thing was he was on the cusp of signing for Manchester City. So Alex Ferguson got involved to try and persuade him to come back to Manchester United. But you are right in terms of the Glazers, as we've seen the management style in the past, they do like the big name signings and no one comes bigger than Cristiano Ronaldo. It seems though that Eric Ten Hag has now become the power, the real power broker at Old Trafford at this stage. Other managers have complained that maybe the club weren't signing the players that they wanted to bring in. But it would look on the face of it, because this was effectively Ten Hag versus Ronaldo for quite a couple of months here, effectively. Eric Ten Hag now has the full support of the club, the far side of the saga. Yeah, everyone I've spoken to within the club says that Eric Ten Hag has the backing of the board. He has the backing of all the senior management within the club in terms of what decisions he wants to make because this is his team that he's moulded. Manchester United haven't won a title since Alex Ferguson left the club. If they want to be seriously considered as title contenders, they're going to have to, at some point, give all those decisions over to the manager. And he's come in, he knows what he wants to do. And as we've seen from the start of the season, Cristiano Ronaldo does not fit the style of the play that they want to play. What next for Cristiano Ronaldo then? Last week when he was speaking to Piers Morgan, he name-dropped the two clubs he was linked to during the summer, Napoli and Sporting Club Portugal. There are two options. He could go back to Sporting, have that romantic finish to his career, back to his roots and play things out there. Or potentially he could go to another club and try and fulfil those Champions League ambitions, which is believed during the summer he wanted a Champions League club. We were chatting a little bit earlier. We are saying maybe Arsenal might be interested uh, in adding some firepower (laughs) or potentially Chelsea. Where do you see Cristiano going next? It's a really good question because he said in that interview that plenty of clubs were interested in the summer. So now we're going to see if what he was saying was true, isn't it? Because if all those clubs were interested in him, now he's available on a free, maybe they can come in and step up for the person that they supposedly wanted in the summer. From how I understand it, the only team that wanted him was a team in Saudi Arabia. He didn't want to go there and that's why he didn't leave Manchester United in the summer. Um, You speak there about... uh, 
romantic return to sporting, but that would require him. I don't under, I don't know the, the ins and outs of their um, budgets, but that would require him to take a huge wage cut. He says nothing about what he's doing is for money. We all know he earns a heck of a lot of money and he's got a lot of money in the bank, but that would require him to take a huge wage cut if he's going to go back somewhere like that. So I think we're going to see what really matters to him in the next few weeks. Yeah, because, look, he enjoyed the question, which many of us laughed at at the start of part two of the interview, which was Piers Morgan talking about, do you have more millions in the bank or millions of social media followers? And Mm -hmm. he laughed away at that question and seemed to quite enjoy it. Um, I'm not saying that Cristiano Ronaldo is entirely motivated by money, but even when he's in a free transfer situation, it's unlikely he's going to take a massive cut if he's currently earning reportedly one million a month from Manchester United. He's likely to be very expensive for whoever signs him. Of course he is. He's gonna. He joked, didn't he, that he was the highest paid player in the Premier League ever. He made a joke about that, and he won. Despite what he said, him and his agents tried to get him a move away from Manchester United in the summer, and he didn't end up leaving. If it wasn't about money, and now he's left they've terminated the contract on mutual agreement so he's not going to get any money from that if it was really about going to a club with Champions League aspirations why didn't you turn around to them at the time and say please may let me go you don't have to pay me any more money I'll just leave now for free as far as I understand it that did not happen so at some stage this well it's all about business isn't it football is a business and he gets paid a lot of money a week so you can understand from his perspective why he didn't do that not worked out the way that he wanted to but whoever signs him next will have to pay him a hefty wage bill. I wonder about Chelsea if he is going to stay within the Premier League just purely from the reports during the summer that the Mm -hmm. Chelsea owners seem to be interested in Cristiano Ronaldo but Thomas Tuchel who was manager then wasn't interested. Now this would have to be a decision Mm -hmm. for Graham Potter if Chelsea were to go back in and to offer him a contract but Chelsea obviously are trying to find goals and a reliable goal scorer for the team. I just wonder if that might be the right fit. Yeah, of course. And, and maybe that's a possi- that's an option that they'll then look into. You're right in terms of they got loads of money, so maybe the the wages wouldn't be the problem like it is for other clubs. But you've also got to look at him as a personality within the dressing room. Lots of people have spoken positively about the way Ronaldo fits into the United dressing room, but there were a lot of negative suggestions about the way he impacted it as well. So it's not just a situation of looking at can he bring goals. You've got to look about the, the balance that he would bring to the dressing room